Hi, so this is a troubleshooting video that I put together for you. I know that some people were having difficulty um, getting the tape to stick, and some people had good reason for that because there actually was a bad batch of tape that came out in the U.S. market. Um, but there was also some people in other countries who did not have access to this tape who are having some difficulties with sticking as well. So I wanted to put this video together for you. In this video, I'm going to go through pretty much every reason that I can think of as to why you would be having difficulty with the tape staying on. And I'm going to hopefully give you some solutions that will help you uh, have better success in the future. So um, thanks for watching the video, and we'll start running through those now. So in this video, I'm going to talk about rock tape because that is the tape that most of you are using and it's also the tape that most of you are having trouble with that are having trouble. So for starters, there are multiple types of rock tape. The one that I'm showing you right now is the standard tape. This is made for humans. It's made for athletes. Um, it was the original tape that they had and it was actually what I originally started taping animals with because rock tape historically has stuck better than other kinesiology tapes on the market. Rock tape some years ago decided to up the game by creating what they call the H2O tape, which is supposed to be extra sticky. This tape is uh, primarily marketed for people that are swimming, um, surfers, people doing water activities. They just made the glue composition a little bit stickier in this tape so that it would hold better in the water. So before the equine tape came into existence, this is what rock tape was recommending that we use on animals. So remember, I initially started using just the regular rock tape, which stuck well in comparison to the other tapes that I had access to, then started using this H2O tape, which stuck even better. Now about two years ago, Rock Tape came out with their equine line of tape, which basically is just the H2O tape with equine labels in marketing. Um, Rock Tape has told me since then that they actually upped the levels of the glue in the equine tape, so it's a little bit stickier than the H2O, but I've also heard from other sources that it's still the same glue composition as the H2O tape. So this is what most of you are using currently, is the equine tape. Um, and keep in mind that if you don't have access to the equine tape, or if you're looking for different, like a bulk roll of it, or different um, patterns, you can use the H2O tape instead of the equine. It is a, a good substitution for that. So that covered the different types of tape available, but we also know that we have different sizes when we're purchasing the tape. We have the um, four inch tape, which is also called the Big Daddy, and that can either come in a size like what we're seeing here, or you can get a bulk roll, which is what we're seeing behind there. It's a bulk roll of the two inch, but we can get that in the four inch as well. I, as far as I know, they do not have bulk rolls in the equine tape, so it's important to remember if you're purchasing a bulk roll like this happened recently, somebody thought that they were getting the equine tape and then realized it was just the human tape, which is less sticky, but you can get the bulk rolls in the H2O tape. Now I'm going to talk about the color of the tape. As you probably know, rock tape comes in a lot of different colors and patterns. Now you probably wouldn't think that the color would have much to do with the way that it sticks, but I have found that it actually does influence it a lot. So these different colors and patterns, some of them tend to stick well, some of them do not. What I have found historically is what tends to stick the best for me is just the plain old black with the rock tape logo. So that's what I tend to stick with. I've noticed in the past that sometimes the beige color, uh, some of the other solid colors, sometimes the camouflage, just has a tendency to not stick at well, as well for whatever reason. So I do recommend that when you're purchasing rock tape for use on horses, whether you're doing the equine tape, um, which usually the equine tape with the horseshoes sticks well, either that or the um, black H2O tape with the rock tape logo would be my first two choices as far as historically what seems to stick the best. Okay, so now that we figured out exactly what type and color of tape we want to use, 
The next thing I'm going to discuss is prepping the horse correctly. And remember, uh, for this video too, a lot of these are also going to apply to dogs that we're taping for our canine taping, so keep that in mind as well. But to start with, if we have a horse or a dog that's dirty, that's been out rolling in the dirt, um, that has a lot of sweat, dried sweat on them, whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that we brush them and get all of that off of there before we attempt to tape. Once all the dirt and loose hair is off the horse, the next thing we want to think about is whatever products have been put on the horse that may cause the coat to be oily. This is going to be your fly sprays, your liniments, your um, show sheen is a big one, anything that has any kind of oil in it. And the way that we're going to remove this oil is with rubbing alcohol. Now when we put the alcohol on the area that we're going to be taping, we want to make sure that we let it dry completely before we try to apply the tape. If we try to apply the tape over wet, over a wet area, the tape is not going to stick as well. As you can see in this video, I did not let it dry completely, so the tape is coming off easily. It's also important to note right now that you do not have to always prep every horse with alcohol before taping it. Most horses will do fine being taped without an alcohol prep. This is in the case that Shoshin, fly spray, or any other substance that's oily, or just a horse that has an overly oily coat, um, is present so that we can remove some of that oil to give the tape a better chance of sticking. Next, I'd like to talk about the area of the horse that's being taped, because depending on where you are putting that tape, that's going to greatly influence how well the tape is going to stick and how long that tape is going to stay on. Areas of the horse, like the back in the, sac in the sacrum, if we're doing a long distance dorsi support or the SI support taping, we're going to see that those tapings tend to stay on a lot longer than a neck and shoulder or a knee taping or a stifle or hawk taping. Um, the latter tapings that I just mentioned, they're going to come off a lot easier. Uh, some of that is due to the movement in the joint and some is due like in the areas of the neck for some reason tend to be a lot more oily than other parts of the horse. When we're taping one of these areas where the tape tends to not stay on as well due to the movement of the area, there's a few tricks that we can use to try to help that tape stay on a little bit better. The first one is to use less stretch. The less stretch you use, the better the tape is going to stay on. So I know for an area like the stifle, we say that we want to use a 50% stretch as a mechanical stabilization, but if you're finding that the tape is falling off fairly quickly, we may have to modify that and use a 20% stretch or even sometimes just a paper off stretch. Now this is still going to give it a stabilization effect, maybe not quite as much as when we do the 50% stretch, but we're going to get a better result with the less stretch because the tape is going to stay on longer. The second trick that we can use is that we can use more anchors. So these pieces that are running uh, perpendicular to the big daddy pieces that you're seeing on the shoulder taping, those are our anchors. And if it's in an area that we know that there's a lot of movement and that the tape is not sticking as well, we can use as many anchors as we need to. We could put another anchor through the center of that. We could do um, kind of an X over the ends instead of just that one anchor there. We could X them on both ends to try to give it a little bit more support. So add more anchors if, if needed. And now the last thing that we can do to help the tape stick better is we can use a sticky spray. This is just an example of a spray that I use. Um, it's the Kramer QDA. There are a lot of athletic sticky sprays on the market and I've even heard of students who do not have access to a sticky spray using hairspray as a substitute. Now when you're using a sticky spray, it's important that you use it correctly. There are two applications, the spray-on and the wipe-on. When you're doing the spray-on application, you want to spray directly on the horse's skin or coat, and then you want to wait for that spray to become sticky. 
Now it should be sticky to the touch if it is wet and it's not sticky yet, it's gonna have the opposite effect on the tape. The tape is gonna not stick at all. So do not apply the tape until it feels sticky to the touch. Once the coat of the horse is feeling good and sticky, you can go ahead and apply the tape over the area. And if, it's, if you waited long enough, you'll see that the tape is reluctant to come off. It should be stuck on there pretty well. That's the proper way to do the spray on sticky spray taping. The next sticky spray method that we're gonna use is the wipe on method. Now to do this, you're gonna spray a paper towel. You wanna make sure you get a pretty decent amount on that paper towel. And then you're gonna take the paper towel and you're gonna wipe the area of the horse where you're going to be applying the tape. And the same is true for when you spray the horse directly, you then want to wait for that area to dry and be sticky to the touch before applying the tape over it. Now I just want to talk a little bit about how long the tape should last. Because I think some of you may have unrealistic expectations of how long this tape should be staying on the horse that you're taping. Now, as I mentioned before, when we're doing a back taping or a sacrum taping, um, these tapings tend to stay on for a fairly long amount of time, unless you have a horse that's doing a whole lot of rolling, um, rubbing it up against something. But for the most part, we tend to see these stay on for days up to weeks at a time. I've had one client leave it on their horse for a month and it was still on completely. I don't recommend leaving it on that long, but that's the one that you're gonna see uh, will last the longest for you. Also, if you were working with a human tape or if you have some of that rock tape that isn't quite, the equine rock tape that wasn't quite as sticky, if you got some of the so-called bad batch, you can use that tape for your longissimus dorsi or your sacral support tapings because that's going to stick pretty well to those areas. Now, if you're taping an area like a knee or a stifle or a hock, one of those joints that's going to have a lot of movement, you're going to be lucky to get a day out of that tape. Sometimes the tape will only last a few hours. Sometimes it'll only last during the one exercise. When I personally am taping clients' horses and I'm taping an area that I know is a high movement area and that there's a high likelihood that that tape's going to come off, I either do one of two things. I either cut some, I'll pre-cut some tape for them and show them how to reapply it and leave them with enough to do another taping or two until I come and see them again so that they can reapply it before working the horse. Or I'll just go ahead and sell them a full roll of tape um, at, the, at the normal price, not my discounted price, and leave them with that roll of tape. And again, I will show them how to go ahead and reapply that so that they can reapply it when I'm not there. Because the way that the horse is going to benefit from this is if he's wearing the tape during exercise and movement. And if the tape is coming off within a day, and this is the same with my dog clients, if I have a dog with an ACL injury, I know that that's going to have to be retaped frequently. So I'll often sell the owners a roll of tape, show them how to reapply it in that area, and have them reapply the tape as needed until they come back to see me again. Those of you who are also human taping practitioners, um, we'll likely know from experience as well that it's similar in humans that if we have a patient that is relatively inactive and we're doing a back support taping on them, that tape will probably still be on there um, a week later when they come back for their appointment. Whereas if we have an athlete that we're taping right before um, a competition, that athlete may actually need to be retaped once or twice during the competition because especially if we're taping an area like the knee or the elbow where there's a lot of movement, that tape is going to start to come off, especially as they start sweating and the more that they're moving. All right, so I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, the only other thing to note is that if a horse is sweaty, which I am dealing with right now in Florida because it's been in the 90s every day, the tape won't st stick as well to a sweaty horse. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, if you could cool them down, dry them off, um, you'll have 
a better chance at getting the tape to stick. But other than that, I think I've covered pretty much all the tips that can help you out. And if you have any other questions or if there's anything that I missed, just shoot me an email at drangelifarber at gmail.com and I'll be happy to answer them for you.